in a moment. So my name is indeed Pastor Geert and originally I'm from the Netherlands. So if you hear an accent, which I'm sure you do, you know I'm not from England, but I'm originally from the Netherlands. That's why I also with pride am wearing this beautiful colored orange scarf from Pathfinders there or the Scouts. But I work at the moment indeed as a pastor in Stembroke Park Church in Watford. And as you can see, um, if you were to come and visit me, you would see in my office immediately what my greatest hobby is. And that is, yes, there is a lot of books, but if I had a chance, there would be even more Lego. I mean, you can find the Lego all around my office. And I'm really pleased with the office I have at Stumber Park because it's a big one. And it's needed because some of the models are big and they need the space and I've got them all around. And for sure, Natalie will know it when she's seen my office. There's a lot of them there. There's a lot of them. So it is and always was my number one hobby in life. And I've been pretty much building Lego since I was about five years old. That's when I started to get my first gifts with Lego uh, because I was often sick. And so I always would get them some Lego. But I also love to travel. I love kayaking. I love to paint or, or draw. I love mountain biking. Um, I love drama and mime. Uh, and I love also to play the drums, especially if I can play it in church. So I'm looking forward that finally we can open up again and join in and make some joyful noise. But today we're talking about, let me just go here. Today we're talking about this one, the Lego Honor. I mean, you can see it, it's beautiful with all the colors out there and it's a beautiful honor to work on. So, but if we are thinking about it, what, where, where does Lego come from? So Lego comes from the Danish word leggot, leggot, which means play well. And so they just used the first two letters of each word, the L-E and the G-O and made it into Lego, but it actually stands for leggot, which is play well play well. And also it's interesting when you use the word Lego in Latin, it means I put together, which of course is, is beautifully found because that's what it does. We're putting things together. Now, how did it all start? Where does Lego come from? I mean, I, I would have almost imagined that Lego has always been there. I mean, in my life, it's always been there because I'm only 24, 25 years old. So Lego has always been there. Oh, sorry, uh, I'm not allowed to lie, am I here? No, so I need to speak to, but I, I'm, I'm close to 25, I feel, or act. And so Lego has always been there in my life. And I thought it has always been there. It must may, may be created by God at creation day. But we know, of course, that's not true. Lego had a start. It did not fall out of the sky. It was really someone's idea. And that idea was by this man that you see right in the middle of our slide, Ole Kirk Christiansen. He was from Denmark, a beautiful place, Bilund, which of course is really still the town and where you will find lots that have to do with Lego. But that's where Ole used to grow up. He was born, he, of course he was born, but he was born on April 7th. 1891. So as I was reminded actually that yes he had basically his birthday, his family will still be celebrating his birthday remembering him that that was last week because he passed away in 1958. But Ola, Ola was by by trade he was a woodworker, a carpenter and he had the shop where they would make uh, all kind of furniture but they also would even make uh, uh, houses, houses out of wood real houses so he made huge things and it worked really well he had quite a few people working for him in his company but then in the 1930s something happened in the world that had an effect on his company and we called it the great depression many people got unemployed uh, there was not a lot of work going around and if you had work people did not have a lot of money to buy things and so Ole noticed that in his company, they were struggling. They would not get all the, 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 the jobs to make all this big furniture or even houses. People didn't have the money. And so he decided together with a couple of his people in the company to look at how can we still survive? And he thought, why do we not make the, the models that we make like chairs, like, like houses? Why don't we make them in a smaller scale? So we can almost make it into little models and eventually it became like toys. And so that's where then eventually 
in uh, 1934, they were thinking of the name Lego. And it was during that time that they started to really work on what you can see on the top left of your screen, automatic binding bricks, as it was eventually known. Because first it didn't call Lego, it was first automatic binding bricks. But you can tell that doesn't really roll out of easily from the tongue, right? That's not really how you, hey, uh, mommy, what toy would I like to have? Oh, I would like to have some automatic binding bricks. No, I think if you say Lego, that works much better. So I'm so happy that they went with that name. But I mean, as they were working with the company and they were still working a lot with wood and some of the plastic, plastic became more and more popular, especially through the Second World War. And then they started to get the models, as you can see there on the right as well. They became the first sort of Lego blocks. And inside, it even had the name of the company Lego. But you can see that these blocks were not the way that they look today. They were still a little bit more soft, not as hard of the plastic. And eventually, they kept on working and working at it. And you can see that Lego now has become something all around the globe. I mean, you see on the right top, you see Legoland in Boulogne, uh, which was opened in 1968. And on the le left corner, uh, bottom corner, you see Legoland Windsor. If you come here from England, maybe you had a chance to go there. I had a chance to go there a few times. I know it's not cheap, but oh, it is beautiful. It's definitely worth the money if you have a chance to go there with the family. But man, the beautiful things that they have there. And Legoland Windsor was opened in 1996. So it is quite a while later than the one in Boulogne. But that is how it all came about. And so really, the date that they give to Lego that it officially came into the market, as we know it, is 1949. So only a couple of years after the World War. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of a little bit of the history of where Lego came from. It did not just fall out of the sky. It was created by this beautiful mind of Ola. And it was created to be, as it says on your slide, creative. Lego gives so much opportunity. I mean, when you see it in front of you, it's hard not to touch it. It's hard not to start to put things together. And all of a sudden, your mind just goes in overdrive and you start creating things. And I think that is something that God has put in you and me. The Bible says in Genesis 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God created. I mean, God is the greatest creator ever. He created right from the start. And then in that same chapter in verse 26 in Genesis, it then says, let us now, and this is God speaking, let us now make men in our image. Let us make them as we are in our likeness. And I think that's why you and I, we all have this enormous creativity. And we also saw it just in the previous moment when we were learning about all the different arts. We've been made to be creative. And that is what Lego can really do in you and me to really make that happen. And as you can see, when you are then creative, there is always a journey. You start with something that is maybe what we say, something like a bit simple, but then you keep on working at it and eventually it can become something very, very genius, very precise. I mean, you see on the left, you see an, an English double decker and that one is from the 1950s. I do have that one in my office as well. And it's much smaller. It's just a very small scale one. But I also do have the one that came out not so long ago in 1970 or 2017. 1970 would be a long time ago. 2017, the other one on the right, the double decker came out. And that is quite a bigger model. And I love that one. And I have them both side by side. But it tells you that there was a journey. That it started very simple and then it grew into something more, more finer, more, more precise and with more detail. And that is the beauty with Lego for you and me. And I hope that you will keep on learning on that is don't expect immediately when you start with it or you work with it. And you may be still young that you can make these beautiful big models. Take your time. Just keep on learning. Keep on trying different things. And you will find as further you go and as you keep working with Lego, it becomes better and, and you try more things. But always remember, it is just about creating. Don't worry what it looks like. If you love it, that is great. And you don't even have to dress up. Can you see that box that's there in the middle? The Lego system, that was the, how it was sold in those days. Lego in the 1950s was sold in boxes like those. And you can see that even the boy, he's got the bow tie. 
I mean, I think that that Parson de Jan should wear more often a bow tie. I think he is made for bow ties. So, and I think if you agree with that, you should tell him should, through the chat line, Parson de Jan, more bow tie for you. But that is how you apparently played with Lego in the old days. I never did. I just wear anything. So here we go, guys, because of course you've got some requirements. You've got some assignments to do. You have to learn. You have to try different things. And so we're going to look through our uh, moment this uh, afternoon at these requirements. The first one, you have to know the following terms. Element, stud, brick, plate, base plate, tile, slope, inverted slope, a hinge, technics components, power components, mini vicker. Now, I can tell you honestly that quite a few of these ones I didn't even know. To me, it was all just known as Lego. I called it all Lego. But hey, I'm learning too as I'm doing it together with you. And that's the beautiful thing of this. So that is one of the requirements we're going to look at in a moment, that you need to know these elements. And when you have your worksheet, if you've been able to print it out, or you have maybe a pad with, with a pen, make some notes in a moment to, to write some things down. But again, of course, later on, all these slides will be again able to be found. And so you can look through the slides again. The second requirement that you have to do is to build and or find examples of these scale models. So let's start with the micro scale, which you can imagine that is very small, which is smaller than the mini figure scale. The mini figure scale is about uh, four bricks on top of each other. That's a mini figure, but this needs to be smaller. Then you have the mini figure scale, which is the standard size, which is about the size of four bricks on top of each other, and then to build or find something on a one-to-one -one scale, which is like actual life size. And we're gonna look at that in a moment, what it all means. Thirdly, you have to choose one of the following. Build a one-to-one -one scale out of things from nature, or what you see at home, or maybe in church, or at your youth group or pathfinders group. You need to find something that you can make on a one-to-one -one scale. So something that looks almost like real, the size as it is in real life. And then you need to make a picture of that and share it, send it off, okay? Or you can build a scale model of maybe your bedroom or someone else in the house's bedroom, maybe a scale of the house or another community building, something that is known, and then you build it in scale. And in that, you then use items like a bed, a chair, a fridge, whatever is in these buildings to really give a sense that these, this, this, in this building people are living. Again, then you're going to make that, make a picture of that, and you're going to share it. Requirement number four, you build a scene or an item from a Bible story, choosing a scale from requirement two. So either in the micro or in the minifigure or in the one-to-one -one scale. So think of some of the stories in the Bible. And you know, there are plenty of stories out there. And in a moment, we're going to look at that a little bit closer. The fifth one is be creative and create two of your own designs from these five categories. So you're going to choose from these five categories and you need to make two sort of things yourself. Create them yourself with Lego that you have or that you can maybe get and buy or maybe borrow from someone if you don't have it. So A, maybe you can make a car or a truck or another vehicle that moves over land. Or B, you maybe make a plane or a helicopter or any kind of an, an, an aircraft, something that is moving in the air. C, maybe you wanna build a ship or a submarine or any other kind of craft that moves over or in the water or even underwater. D, maybe you want to create an animal or a plant, something that is based on, on, on real life that is really out there. And E, you can choose maybe to make a machine or appliance, it's like a tool, something that's been used maybe in the kitchen, around the house, or maybe even a robot. But you don't have to worry about the power functions. And then you share that in your group and you share it, of course, with the Pathfinder leaders. Six, choose one of the following options. A, use Lego as a visual aid in a children's story, and that is for the age group of two to nine. So don't make it too difficult, but also don't make it too simple. But look at something that they could use as a children's story, a church or Sabbath school group. Or B, you use the Lego as part of a school project. So maybe as you come to school, you want to do kind of project and using Lego as a visual aid so they can really see it. So you make that choice 
and then you let the leaders know. And seventh, how can you use Lego as witness tool to those who don't know about God? And so in that you write about 250 words and then in that you just describe how do you think that Lego can be used and maybe you can show some pictures with examples or maybe you wanna do a three to five minute presentation at your club, the youth group, Pathfinders group, anywhere and use the Lego then to tell people about Jesus Christ, how much Jesus loves us all. And so that gives just in a birth view very quickly the different requirements that you have to do. So let's go immediately into requirement number one because time just keeps on going, doesn't it? So here is requirement number one. Know the following terms. Element, stud, brick, plate, base plate, tile, slope, inverted slope, hinge, technical components, power components, and mini figure. So here we go to the first term, element. Now, element is just basically a global word. It's a universal word, a name that we use for all the Lego pieces that there are. And there are many of them. And in many different shapes, many different colors. But every piece of Lego, whether that be a tire, whether that be a brick, whether that be a plate, anything that you will find in a moment, what are all these different items, they are all elements of Lego. And so you can see on the bottom already, there's a variety of different Lego elements. So that is the element. So if you have your worksheet, just write that down. Element, a universal name for Lego pieces. What is a stud? Well, the studs are those, those little things on top of the bricks and on different and of plates on the different elements of Lego. These are like the little bumps, as you can read there, that you find on top of Lego elements. And they make actually it possible for Lego to really stick because when you turn it around, you can see in the picture, inside it's called the tubes and the tubes fit in between all these studs and together they really then fit very well. So the studs are those little bumps on top of the Lego elements. Brick. Well, this is what I always thought, like, oh, everything is called a brick. Everything is Lego bricks. That's what we used to call it. But now I'm learning there are so many different names for it. So a brick is any Lego piece that at least has the height of three plates. And you can see in the top, right top, you can see this white Lego brick. And then you see on the left of it, you see this red, orange, yellow levels. These are three plates on top of each other, just to show you the thickness or the height of a Lego brick. So a Lego brick needs to have that height of three plates high. And most are rectangular, some are round, and they come in many different types and colors. There are more than 200 different Lego bricks, and there are more than 60 different colors. And you can just see at the right bottom, just a little bit of an, an, an variation of these bricks there. So that is a brick. And then we have the plate. The plate of course is often probably the first thing that we pick up because we wanna have something of a base. And a plate is any Lego piece, which is one third the height of a brick. You can see there were three of these plates on top of each other would have the height of a brick. But here you see all these different plates there on this huge pile in the picture and they come in all kinds of shapes. They're triangle, they're even sometimes round, but most of them are a square or rectangular. And we use them just to make them as a base for anything that we start building, a house or a car or anything like that. So that is the plate. What is connected to that is the next one is the base plate. And we can sometimes um, mix them up a little bit because we think like, oh, well, isn't it all the same? Well, in a way, Yes, they have the same kind of purpose because a base plate is a thin plate on which to build larger constructions, which you can also do on quite a big plate. They come in quite big sizes. But these ones are really made solely to be the foundation, the base. Why? Because when you turn them around, as you can see in the left corner, when you turn around, the green one is a base plate. It has no bottom connections. The studs of anything will not fit into those holes. It does not fit. And as it does with the gray plate that you can see part of it, that would still fit the bottom to have something of Lego under it. But a base plate can only be used as a base. As you can see in that picture, like a little farm, 
but you can't do anything under it. That is really to be the foundation. Now, that is the difference between a plate and a base plate. Now, then we have tiles. Tiles, I, I love tiles because they're often the, the finishing touch when you, might, when you make things. Because when you want to make cars or, or houses and you want to give it a more shiny feel, we use tiles. Tiles are any Lego plate which does not have most or any of the studs. Because there are some tiles that you can see the pink one on the top does have a little stud in the center, but most of them are like the ones on the right bottom. They are just completely flat. They have no studs on the top of all and giving it a smooth top surface. So you can use it really if you want to have like a table or anything, and you want to give the table a nice smooth surface, then you use these tiles. Okay, so that is the tile as an element of Lego. Here is another element of Lego, which is the slope. The slope piece looks, as it says, like a cheese grater. Or maybe we say, well, actually, it looks almost like a piece of cheese. Because when you buy cheese, in many ways, it also looks a little bit like that, like a triangle. And it's often used to create a roof. A roof or any kind of nice, edgy part. It's about two-thirds of a brick with a 33-degree slope. If you can remember that, then you are a Lego expert. 33 degree slope, that is what the slope is all about, right? So that is that piece. And of course, indeed we used especially for creating roofs as you can see on that picture. And they come again in many sizes and in many different colors. But it's not only the normal slope, there's also the inverted slope, which is a bit like the, a slope upside down. And it's, that is exactly what it is. And you can see it in the picture and we can use it for instance, if we wanna build boats, we want to give this idea like it's a boat that comes out of the water and it has this shape of a hull. And of course, sometimes you can buy boat hulls in Lego already completely made, but it's much more fun if you completely create it from inverted slope material and really use your creativity and your own color schemes. You can work with that. It can be used also for many different models of cars or trucks. So that is the inverted slope. Then we have the hinge. Well, hinges we have at home everywhere. We have hinges with our doors, with our windows, um, our, our fridge, freezer, everything works on hinges. And in Lego, we have them as well. They're the movable joint on which a door, a gate, a lid swings open and shut. And you can see on the bottom several different ideas of hinges. The one on the right is actually one of the older models. That was the hinge that I was really known. I didn't even realize all the other ones are also part of the hinge family, but they are. So here you go. I'm learning too, together with you. And so you see already different models of hinges. So when you do your requirements, maybe it's good for you also to find some pictures so you can share that in your requirements when you send it off to show like, yes, I know these are the type of hinges. Then there is the Technic components. It's another Lego element. Lego Technics gives new functions and building styles. I mean, the pieces as you can see on the right, they have holes in it so that pins, axles, gears, wheels, all of it, it can fit through. And of course they are used especially a lot with electrical kind of machines, car models, trucks, and especially trucks and cars. That is my kind of thing. That's where most of the models in my office is like that. And so you will find a lot of these pieces of Technics components in my models. Power component, electric building parts for Lego sets most often used in Lego Technic and Creator. A battery box, it says, may be needed. Yes, these are when you really want to see your Lego come to life, when you can almost use it with a remote control. You have a cable. I mean, I have a few of these models that you can lose like that, like a crane. I have a truck that, that picks up cars that have broken down, and it has all these mechanical um, parts that are moving, but it needs a power component for that. And of course, here you come into the range of Lego models that become a little bit more, more expensive. So it's not always easy to have that, but you know, I didn't start with the power component. It took me a couple of years. And so don't worry, eventually you will get to that kind of things if you wanna go there. Finally, the last requirement of number one uh, of the elements, Lego elements is the mini figure, which I spoke about earlier. It's this kind of blocky, miniature figures found in most of the Lego sets. They were introduced in 1978, so they were not always there. Before that, you just had to use your creativity to create some sort of like human being ideas if you want to, to, to make a scene. 
but now we have them all there. And as you can see, they are unique to Lego. And you can see from the left to the right, all of these different models. You can see, hey, you can find them in different cultures, different styles. I mean, there's a very English one, hey, like an English soldier standing there uh, at the castle. And of course, Harry Potter is very famous for many, uh, and they love to have that. And you see all these different ones uh, for, for uh, space. Space is another um, sort of story in Lego that's now very popular. Uh, the one that I found very popular is that one uh, right beside it. It's a footballer, but a Dutch football player you can even find in Lego. So, I mean, since Lego has Dutch football players in Lego, it's the best toy ever. And then, of course, you can find even very old ones on the right picture on the left and then very modern ones, Batman. And so these are the mini figures, which are normally about four bricks, Lego bricks tall. Right, so that is the first requirement. So make some notes of that and keep on following your requirement sheet and you will find in there all of these titles and then you know a little bit what to write down or otherwise just watch again the slides later on when it's been published out there. Here you can see a little bit what happens when you start using your creativity and lots of things you can start making out of Lego. And you can see, I mean, my my favorite ones are the ones on the top, the, the, the trucks. I really love trucks. Actually, just a secret between you and me, don't tell my boss, but actually what I really wanted to become when I was younger was a truck driver, a lorry driver. That was my biggest dream. And then to see the world. So now I just try by just having them in my office. And later on, you might see some of the pictures of those models that I have in my office. But wouldn't you love that, that Batmobile that you see there on the left? I mean, that is like life size. That is one to one scale when it's like a real life size. Or do you see that boy on the right, right of your screen sitting there right beside this football stadium? I mean, that is Joe Bryant. And in that picture, he was 12 years old and he's built a lot of different football stadiums from the pictures, but also having been there to the football matches and then looking at these stadiums and he's built them completely out of Lego by heart. I mean, this is not that he had this, these kind of booklets that come when you buy Lego and telling them him how to build it. No, he just tried and tried and eventually was able to make these football stadiums all by himself, just using all the different Lego elements. And so you can see if you use it, you, you never know where you might get. Okay, requirement number two. We're oh, moving on. You're, Build. You're, you're, uh... You're inspiring everyone to uh, want more Lego now so they can start <laughs> building all of these things. <laughs> I'm just praying for all of you who are following this that your, your birthdays will be very soon. And, and otherwise, that just Christmas comes soon enough. I mean, here in England, Christmas starts pretty much in June, July already. <laughs> it starts already in the shops. It tells Christmas is coming and people starting, uh, start to buy things. So just a bit of patience. But yes, when, even when I'm talking about it now, I know that tomorrow I will probably be again on eBay, see if I can find someone who's selling some beautiful Lego secondhand, which I will talk about in a moment. There are some ideas of how you can find some Lego sometimes a lot cheaper than in the shops. But let's move on with requirement number two. You need to build or find examples of these scale models that we talked about earlier, the micro scale, the minifigure scale, or the one-to-one -one scale. So let's quickly have a look at what it looks like. And then you need to find some examples. Again, make pictures of it and send it off. That's, I guess, how it works, Natalie. They send it off to, to you guys or to their leader. Yep, um, pass the date. Well, when they take, uh, they'll need a photo uh, to add to their uh, worksheet for them to show that they've done the requirement. Okay. But um, also pass the day and would love to see your models uh, to add to the online gallery as well. So yeah. he'll put the um, the um, his email address in the chat room. Soon okay, see. beautiful. Well, I'm looking forward to, to see what all of you have been found, found, found for yourself or maybe what you have built. As it says, you can either build it or you can find examples. And of course, the challenge is much more active to try to build it yourself. There's so much more fun in building it yourself sometimes of course, you can see an example on Google or from someone else, but then try to build yourself. That is really the fun of Lego. 
So let's quickly have a look at these different scales. So here is the micro scale and micro scale actually comes almost in two scales now. There's even the nano scale, which is the micro micro scale. And I can quickly show you, and I know we're not supposed to really show things, but, but just quickly do this because I was not able to make a picture of this, but this is nano scale. So what you see here, these two little things on top of each other is supposed to be a human being. So that is like a mini, mini, mini figure. So, and of course, this is very much a Dutch picture of a windmill. And so- Did you, did when you buy that in the Netherlands? Is we that bought it in the Netherlands and then I tried to put it together, but actually I needed my daughter Melody to help because her <laughs> fingers are much smaller. <laughs> my there fingers in most of the cases were not able, they, it was just too small. It would constantly, I would push it too far and then it would <laughs> fall apart. So that is really the small, but this is the micro scale in Lego and of course, the beautiful thing with micro scale is like, you don't need a lot of space. You can find a lot of these models now. There are all these models about different towns, New York and, and famous buildings in this nano or micro scale, and they don't take much space. So if you don't have a lot of space at home, it's actually a perfect way of still enjoying Lego. Now, can you see that this Lego model on my right, uh, on our screen, that that castle, this is Hogwart Castle, which is of course the, the famous castle of the Harry Potter story. And it was built by a lady. And so I'm gonna ask you how, this is the micro scale. How many pieces did this lady need to build it? How many pieces? So if you can put it in the chat, that is the first question. How many pieces do you think it took for her to build this? And then how long did she need? So there are two questions. How many pieces? So give me a number. And then how long do you think she took to build it? Adventurers, what do you think? Oh my goodness, somebody's gone in right in there, 1.5 million. Mm. Oh, we've got an advance on Facebook, 3.2 million pieces. <laughs> wow. wow. Big numbers, those are big numbers. <clears throat> what if I were to uh, tell you? Somebody I mean, one week. Yeah. Um, somebody else thought 5,000 pieces. Ah. Well, it's sort of in between. It's not the 5,000, it's not the one or one and a half million, but it's 400,000 Lego elements of the micro or the nano scale. Wow. 400,000. And it took her, it, this lady, it took her over a year to build it. Mm -hmm. Now, that's of course not that she woke up early in the morning at five o'clock and she was working on it till one o'clock in the, in, the, in the night again. Of course, she did it over the days, but in total, it took her more than a year to build. And I can imagine, I mean, only having built that little windmill, I can understand if you then have to build something like this, that takes a long time. You can see on the left bottom of the screen, you can also see two models. So the left model of the Red Baron, which is one of my favorite uh, World War I planes, on the left one, that is the one in a micro scale. It's very small. It's only, probably it will be about 20, 25 pieces of Lego elements. But then you have, on the right to that, you have got the bigger model, which I have in my office, the Red Baron, and that is more in the mini figure scale, which is the next scale. Let's see, let's look. So here is the mini figure scale, which is the scale where these kind of mini figures would fit to. You can see, for instance, a truck with a mini figure right hanging outside the truck. But these are the models in my office. And you can see the Red Baron right there in the center with another different camel uh, model of uh, plane. You can see a lot of them on my uh, shelves right behind my desk uh, on the right bottom. You can see, especially the one from James Bond is there, the gray one. All these different models, they're all out there and they are the minifigure scale. So this is where these minifigures really would fit right beside. And I love to have most of my models in the same scale because you can also find bigger scales and smaller scales, but I love to have it a little bit all that it, that it fits together. So that is advent, one of the uh, pathfinders said they'd love to come and visit your office. So they're <laughs> getting a quick, they're getting a quick tour now. Oh yes, yeah. I mean, you're always welcome. And honestly, <laughs> when before COVID started, there were always a number of the youngsters in our church. If I would be in my office early in the morning before church started, they would quickly knock and say, "Pastor, Pastor, do you have any new models? <laughs> uh, did you have a, because they knew already, but now all the models that are out there, 
But then they said, are there new models? And sometimes I could say to them like, yeah, I've got a new model and I would show them, but not always because yeah, it takes time and it takes a bit of money. So, but hey, it's a lot of fun. And yes, it's very inspiring to see this. And then we come to in requirement two, maybe you want to think of an idea and I think it will be difficult for you to really make it. I mean, I wouldn't be able to make it. I don't have enough Lego for that, but to make a one to one scale, which is life scale, unless of course you want to just make something like maybe a little cup or you want to make a, a vase with a flower in it, something that is real life still one on one scale and does not take all the Lego. But if you want to make a Formula One, like on the right bottom, or you want to make like James May's house of Lego, he made a real house completely out of Lego. And I don't know if you're familiar with James May, he is from Top Gear here in England, very famous and quite to a lot of people around the globe who are into racing and cars. But he had a house completely built out of Lego. What happened to that house was that eventually he had to take it down. It had to be demolished which is such a shame. And why did it have to be demolished? Because he didn't ask for planning permission. I mean, how silly. I mean, here in England, whenever you wanna build outside, you need to have planning permission because although the country seems to be big, there's lots of people living there and ground have to be very carefully used. But anyway, all the bricks that were used to build that house, and he even tried for a night to sleep in it, and you can check it out on YouTube. Just go to James May Lego House, and you will find a video clip in which he's trying to sleep in the house while it was raining outside and water is dripping everywhere because of course Lego is not waterproof like that. So, but all the Lego bricks that were used for the house, they were then donated to charities. So in the end, it was still beautiful to, to give it to people. And I'm sure lots of children were made happy with that. So we're moving on. Let me just quickly also put on my clock here so that we do stay aware of the time because time keeps on growing requirement number three choose one of the following build a one-to-one -one scale out of nature home church and then share or b build a scale model of your bedroom house community building including furniture like bed chair fridge etc and then and then share it and so i thought well let me just see if i can give you an example of that and thank you auntie natalie for giving me some inspiration on that to, to bring that into this slides because here it is you can see on the left the model that I had or that actually my daughter Melody had put together because I bought it secondhand and she felt like, hey, daddy, can I make it? It is the Millennial Falcon from, from Star Wars. And she had put it together, but I thought, let me just put it, take it apart and see if I can create something myself as a requirement, requirement number three. So to build my own model of something. And so what I did, I took it apart and you can see on the slide on the right, I use several buckets from, from Tupperware, but also what I can really recommend, maybe sometimes you might have at home that you guys order some, some Chinese or something like that, some meals. Keep those, those tubs. They are perfect for using with Lego because then you can put in these tubs the different elements of Lego. It's much easier than when you have it all on one big pile, you know, or in, in a big, big box and you have to try to find these pieces. Much easier if you put things together that are all alike like you can see i had this this uh, um, uh, tupperware a bowl with, with the plates on the left i had the bricks and then on the top you can see i had the, the the tiles and i had all the different parts that were very special parts so it was much easier to find and that gave me an idea of how then to start building so then the next step is you go and draw that is always good to make a little sketch of what you're thinking that you want to create because that way you have something that you can still go back to and think like, hey, is it still working? Um, and, and, and I need to remember, this still needs to go in there. So make a drawing. So if you want to build a car or a house, whatever it is, make a little sketch first on paper, how you think you're going to make it into Lego. And then you start building. Now, I chose to go for in the requirement to, to build my own house. So just to make always like a little impression of what our house looks like. So now you're coming into my house. So welcome to my house, because of course, in the middle, you come off. Thank God there is a floor. So we have a flooring, which is like the plate, which is, but it's not the base plate because you can see the next picture. I've turned it around and I put some different parts of Lego all from this model, Star Wars model that I could use just to strengthen it, to put them all together. Mm -hmm. So it was much easier then to work on it. And so, and then I had a very strong base plate, a very strong foundation to start building. 
So then you start building and I thought, let me just start with the kitchen. One of the most important parts of the, the house because that's all about food and that is a good place to start with. And so I started with building the kitchen, which you see on the right, um, the blue uh, uh, little bricks, uh, they have to sort of imagine that it is like a window part of the window, there is a window in our kitchen. And then you see the sink on the right with this blue little pin that is like water coming out of the tap. And so you use your creativity. You know, it doesn't matter whether it is not as realistic. It's about impression, about creativity, using your imagination and what you can see and how you think that it looks the way that you want it to be, that is how it is, it's perfect. And so that's how I built. You can even see in the kitchen in the middle picture, you can see I put in a fridge. That is like our fridge there in the kitchen, just in that corner. And then the picture on the right is like an impression of the steps that would lead to the next level in our house. So I only worked with just the, the ground floor, the first level. On the left again, going to the picture, you can see that I did not have all bricks. I did not have all the different, I didn't have the one stud bricks, for instance, in the model, but I did have the round ones. And so I just put them in the wall because in the end, it's about your idea of the wall. And it doesn't matter whether it has all these colors because if you were to come in my house, of course it doesn't have these, these red blocks in the wall. It's just, that was what I had and I worked with and that gave the idea. And in the end, it's all about an idea, an impression. So don't be too, too concerned. Like it's not exactly as reality. It's about your creativity. So just feel free to go with that. The middle picture is actually how I thought, let me just give an impression of a door, because the model did not have hinges. So I could not make a door that works on a hinge, but I learned when I was a kid already, you don't always need a hinge to give an idea of a door. You can just use a plate and put it sideways on top of another plate, and then you just put some, some tiles on it, and it gives an idea of a door. And now you can see on the right picture, you're already looking from the back of the house, or like the, where the garden is, you look into the house all the way to the front. We don't have a big house, you can tell, uh, but it is bigger than this model, I, I, I promise you. But you can see in the model, there's the table right there in the middle with the couch in yellow, and there's a cupboard on the left, which has our television, and it even has a little lamp stand right there in front, right beside the door. And actually, you know what was funny? My wife was not there when I was building it and she came back in the house and she saw it on the table and I was just walking somewhere in the house. She said like, hey, I see that you've built our house, that you've built our lower level. So she immediately recognized it. So I thought, okay, I've done all right. I've done all right. I've, I've sort of earned my badge at least for this requirement. Yes, yeah, so this gives you an idea of what you could do. And now you can see from the top, top and again, now from the front of the house with the door again, standing in there, to the back, so it gives you an idea. This is just a model, and you can see I did not uh, finish all the walls all the way to the ceiling. That's not necessary always. It's, it's about your idea of what you're trying to create. It's, it's just trying things, working with it. It's not about that it has to be perfect, not at all. Just having fun is what it's all about. Right, we move on, because in the building is something that is very important as a little tip, as you build your models, and especially when you build with walls or anything like that, look at the picture on the top, you see a brick builder. You see someone who's building real houses, and that is how you build houses, you use bricks, but we don't put bricks straight on top of one another. They constantly put two bricks side by side, as you can see with Lego, you put them side by side and then you put another brick on top of it, covering half of each of the bricks, and then you put it together. And if you continue to do that, you put another piece on the side of it, again, constantly overlapping bricks. That way there is strength. That's why our houses are built like that. Our houses don't have the stones on top of each other, as you see on the right top where I put a big red cross through it because that doesn't give strength. And you can try it with Lego, just put bricks on top of each other like that and then push against it. And you will find that it very easily falls over or breaks down. But try to make a wall with bricks and overlapping each other and try now to push it over, you will find it is very strong. It's like real life. It's really out there. Okay, requirement number four, we move on. Build a scene or an item from a Bible story, choosing a scale from the requirement number two, which was either in a micro scale, either in a mini figure scale or in the one to one scale. 
So there's a course, there are so many Bible stories that you could choose from. I mean, how about the, the story of David in, in the lion's den? Uh, that is a beautiful scene to maybe try to make it into Lego. Or what about uh, the beast of Revelation? I mean, here are these, these beasts coming out of the sea and, and maybe you can try to make them from Lego. Again, use your creativity. Or how about just the ark? Make an ark and see if you can also make some of these animals and Noah's family and they're around the ark and there's lots of ideas. And here are then some ideas that you can try to, to get in some, some um, inspiration from and maybe you can guess which ones they are. So the picture on the top left and then we go around like a clock that has the number one in it. Which scene do you think it is? And so maybe we can just quickly put it in the chat. Which the adventures quickly type it in? Yeah, um, number one. Number which one. scene of the Bible? Which story do you think is number one? Oh, Brent is there straight away with Moses. Mm, could it be Moses? Well, there is something small there in in, in a basket. So yeah, who knows? Yeah. Yeah, Buntu saying uh, baby Moses. So I think they're all agreed. Yeah, I mean, of course, hey, we can even see that the, the, the minifigure model behind it seems like a princess, very Egyptian style. So indeed, that is the Egyptian princess who saw baby Moses there in the River Nile. What about number two? I, I know that is a very difficult one. Number <laughs> two. What is number two trying to tell her? What story would that be? What moment is that from the Bible? Right, Pathfinders, get typing with this one. It shouldn't take too long. No. There's a very famous painting of this as well. Yes, and there is someone with the name of Da Vinci, I think, uh, tried ah. to put hand. Did not have Lego yet, so he did it in a different way with many colors. So what yep. scene of the Bible is that one? Uh, we've got Facebook and Zoom who are in agreement that it's the, the, the Last Supper. Yeah, it's the Last Supper. Jesus with the disciples. Uh, just just sitting there at the table made into Lego. How about number three? Because you can already see all the ones on the screen, so you can very quickly already type them in. What about number three? Wow, they're, they're, they're super quick this afternoon. We've got mm. Adam and Eve and the story of creation. Yeah, so I mean, with the rep, the well. cats, everything is there, all the plants, it's Adam and Eve. How about number four? That might be maybe a little bit more difficult. I wonder whether some of you will get it. Number four. What is number four in the Bible story? Oh. Where can you find that one made out of Lego? Number four in the bottom right there. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, there's no, mm. they're not very quick on this one, I'm afraid. Yeah, because I had to think for a moment when I saw that one. I think, like, oh, which one could that be? Number four. But once I you know think... it, you think, of course. Oh, somebody's saying, is it the Pharisees? No, it's not the fair. Although they do look a little bit grumpy, I must admit. They all look a little bit like, like angry, which we sometimes think of Pharisees, that they were always uh, complaining and not happy about things. But no. I think you have stumped them with this one, Pastor. Yeah, well, this one is supposed to be Pentecost. Pentecost. Oh. Do you remember the story in Acts where the disciples, the people in the room, had all these flames above them? And so out of Lego, this is how they tried to, to, to create that moment, the flames above their heads, of Pentecost. Now, number five, I found it really difficult. I thought, where in the Bible does it say that you have been made and that, that God made something of chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> so who knows what, what is happening in number five? Um, I think they've all been distracted by the thought of chocolate Lego. I know I was for a moment there. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said um, Adam, the creation of Adam. And that is completely right. It is indeed God creating them. Because you can see that the minifigure does not even have a, a face yet. No mm -hmm. character yet. It's just something of a model. And that's what the Bible says. God created us from dust from the earth. What about number six? Well, that man must not be too difficult to think. Huh? He's got two things in his hands. So who could that yep. be? Number that six. That should be a fairly easy one for number yeah. six. Come on, Pathfinder. Who can, who can give us an answer to that one? What is number six giving us as a picture? What story in the Bible? He just came down from a mountain. Yep, both path, um, uh, Facebook and uh, Zoom at the same time, Moses and the Ten Commandments. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then number seven, which is a bit connected to, to, to Moses. 
because it does not always have to be a scene. It can also be an item. So what is number seven as an item made out of Lego? How they've done that. <laughs> yeah, I like that too. Yeah. Yep. So we've got the Ark of the um... Yeah. Yeah, the Ark of the Covenant. So again, the requirement says either an item or a scene. So it doesn't have to be a whole scene. You can also think of an item, either a, a, a boat or, or, or something, an, an, a house uh, with a hole in it through which the, the, the friends were loading their friend who was sick to Jesus. Anything can go. And lastly, uh, number eight. What is happening there in number eight? And then we've had them all. Oh, the fishing miracle, somebody. Yeah. Yeah, where, and also when Jesus, of course, said to the disciples. When he first met Jesus. Yeah, and when Jesus said, I, you will no longer be fishes of fish, and I'm going to make you fishes of, of men. Yeah, and so actually it's wonderful when, especially if you ever have a chance to, to, to have a look into the Lego Bible, you will find lots of these scenes in the Lego Bible that is out there. I have it in my office, and it's quite cool to, to just browse through it. So we're moving on. We're moving on. So this gives you some ideas. Requirement number five, be creative and create two of your own designs from these five categories. So again, A, B, C, D, E, the different ones, a land vehicle, aircraft, watercraft, real life, real species, or something that's like a robot machine and you don't have to use power functions. And then create and D, D, you're not allowed to just use one of the Lego plants that they provide. You have to ah, build oh. an actual plant that you good point yeah because indeed in lego you can find quite a few things that have been completely already made as a model but yeah the creativity again needs to be that you really create it from pieces of lego the different elements all by yourself to give the impression of a plant or a flower yeah so here is a quick uh, example of that requirement that i put together so i chose to go for a car so i had a couple of parts there as you see on the left uh, in my house and I just thought like what can I make of that and then as you see on the next slide here you see I started with just the top of the car that looked very much like my car then I gave it some wheels well now it's already a car but it looks really weird because it doesn't have a bumper it doesn't have any filling under it and no doors nothing so and then I put that together and in the end I gave it the name of a police car with even a, the blue light on top of it but as I used those kind of parts you can also, again, use your creativity. So I thought, what other thing can I make out of the same parts? And so I thought, I can make into a water craft, and, and something that maybe works on water. And so you see the same items, they've all been used, and I made it into what looks a little bit like a boat model, almost like a hovercraft idea. And so it's, again, my creativity. Anyone who would see it would think, like, what is that, maybe? But in my mind, I see a boat. And it's all about your creativity that you can use. And when you do that, you can do the same, make a picture of it and put it together with your worksheet. Requirement number six, choose one of the following options. Use Lego as a visual aid in a children's story or use Lego as a part of a school project. Well, again, school projects, you can find lots of ideas also again on Google, but it is also very common to use it in children's stories. And I've used it a couple of times, Lego, in the different children's stories in church or at different programs around the church. And here is an idea of what we used not so long ago when we had Global Youth Day with our teen ministry and was created by a family in our group, the Ishida family. And they created the following video clip in which you can see for a moment, it's not very long, but you can see a very popular story from the Bible used as official aid how you can use lego and so you can see it it's very doable so that might give you some inspiration so let's have a look at that video clip the good samaritan a jew was traveling from jericho to jerusalem when he was attacked by bandits they stole his belongings and left him half dead Later that day, a priest came by. He saw the man, but passed by on the other side of the road. Then a Levite came along, but just like the priest, he passed by on the other side. 
Finally, a Samaritan came along. He saw the man, he stopped and poured oil on his wounds. He put him on his donkey and took him to an inn. He asked the innkeeper to look after the man until he recovers. He gave the innkeeper two silver coins and said, If it's not enough, I will pay you more when I return. Jesus wants us to be like the Good Samaritan. Yeah, and so you see, actually, it's a, it's a very short little video clip, but we use it with our team in the Global Youth Day to just express the theme of that we are there to care for one another, especially in these days where lots of people are lonely. Whatever we can find as ways to, to reach out, to connect with people and help them in their needs. And so Lego is a beautiful way to use that. And that's what we did. So requirement number seven, how can you use Lego as a witness tool? I mean, of course, the previous one is a bit of a witness tool too, as well. But now also to those who don't know about God. So how can you use Lego outside? And, and if you can think of that and can maybe Google and then and start writing, maybe run write 250 word paragraph or do a three to five minute presentation at your club, uh, at the youth group, at the Pathfinders group, wherever, and just present on how you think you can use Lego. Because you see, if, if in Jesus' days there would have been Lego, I believe Jesus would have used Lego because he used pretty much everything that was around. I mean, when he was walking around, he did not preach a lot. Actually, he taught a lot, but he taught with things that were just out there. He said, now look at that farmer in the field. He did not say, OK, now let's create a farmer. No, he said, it's there. Look at the creator. What can we learn? Or look at the farmer. What can we learn from the farmer? He said, look at, at the flowers in the fields. Look at the birds in the sky. Jesus used all kind of elements that were around him. And I believe if Lego would have been there, he would have used Lego. And so there are many ways today that people are using Lego. I mean, there are even companies now, grown-ups all sitting together and using Lego to learn things. And so if they can use it in companies, in business, we can use it also when we sit down with people around the table. I mean, wouldn't it be a cool idea sometimes with a nice evening program to have some table with some Lego on it and say to people, now build something and then have a theme. Maybe you have a theme where you say like, let's talk about love. And they say, okay, there's Lego on your tables. Now build something out of Lego together. And we're sitting around the table that, that gives the idea of love. And so people then have to use their creativity. And by that, you're teaching them something. And then you talk about the love of Jesus. I mean, there are so many ways you can use Lego. Here are some, some websites where you can go to find the different ideas of how people have tried to use Lego as a witness tool. And so... You can just find it again back on the slides when it's being presented later on and you can look at it again and then have a closer look and take the time. But we're moving on because we're almost there. Here's quickly a few fun facts to see whether you know about this. How many combinations can you make by using six Lego bricks, which are the two by fours? That's what we call those rectangular bricks where there are eight studs on top, two, uh, two by fours. If you have six of those ones, of those bricks, how many combinations can you make by using them every time something different? Is it 500,000, so half a million? Is it more than a million? Or is it almost maybe a billion? How many combinations can we make with just six Lego bricks? What do you think? Pathfinders, you, can you type the answer in the chat? You think if it's A, B, a, or, B C. or C? Yeah. Oh, we've had a few people saying it's C. Mm. Um, Facebook's not caught up just yet. Okay. Yeah, we give them. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Here we are. We're getting a few answers. Oh, everybody's agreeing. They think it's all, it's numbers, it's letter C. Wow. I mean, when I was looking at that question and I hadn't found yet the details, I thought like, no, it's definitely not a, almost a billion because do you know how much a billion is? And just with six little bricks. No, it must be maybe about a million. And that would be a lot, a million different options. But yeah, if you said C, you're right. 
there was this Danish mathematic professor, where else would someone think of this? Like how many times can we use these six bricks in different ways? He calculated, I don't think he put it all together like that, but he probably used the computer and to find out how many different options there are, 915,103,765 different ways you can use these six, six bricks in a different way. Wow. I mean, mind boggling. So he, he goes again, creativity with Lego, it's limitless. There's so many different ways. Okay, here's another fun fact, or what do you know about it? How much weight can a single Lego brick take before it breaks? Because it can break. Most of the time when we step on it, they don't break, <laughs> we break. It doesn't right? break, we, break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we break, and also our voice breaks, because yeah. I tell you, I've many times stood on something and not the best sound comes out, it hurts, <laughs> but... How, how strong are Lego bricks? Can they take A, 150 kilograms, which is in English terms, 330 pounds? Can it take 250 kilograms or 550 pounds? Or can it take 450 kilograms, 990 pounds? So how much weight can a Lego brick take? All right, Pathfinders, you're going to write A, B or C into the chat for us. Facebook's already given us an answer, so we'll wait for Zoom to catch up. Okay, I think they're both agreed. They're both saying it's B. Mm, it's B, you think. 250 kilograms or 550 pounds, which is almost like, like four, three or four adults, depending on their weight. They can stand together on one piece of Lego brick before it breaks. Well, there you go, it's C, 450 kilograms or almost 990 pounds. A single Lego brick can withstand more than 950 pounds of pressure before it breaks. So that is about five or six adults weight before it breaks. That's so that amazing. takes quite a lot of weight. Well done to T on Facebook who did actually say C. So well oh, done. wonderful. Well done. Well done. Here's another one. If we would divide all the Lego pieces among every human being on this planet, how many pieces would each one have? So everyone that lives here on the planet and all the Lego that we have, we know we're going to divide it among everyone and everyone gets an equal share from the babies all the way to the very old people, the elderly. Is it that everyone will get 20 um, Lego elements, uh, Lego pieces? Is it that everyone gets 60 or more than 60 or more than 100? More than a 20, more than 60, more than 100. A, B or C. What do you think? How much would everyone get of Lego? Uh, Facebook is saying more than 100. I think they're seeing a theme going on. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone's going for C now. Everyone goes for C. Well, we will eventually get there, I think, if, if Lego keeps on creating more things. And then, um, but of course, we constantly also have more people living on this planet. So it is actually, we are definitely outnumbered. There are about 65 Lego pieces for every human being on the planet at this moment. With 60, 65 uh, Lego pieces, you can build quite a few things. You can build, yeah. <laughs> so, all right, we move on. Where can we find the world's, the world's largest Lego shop? Is it A? London, UK? Is it B, Copenhagen, Denmark, which is of course the country of Lego? The or is it Lego, C, yeah. <laughs> or is it C in New York, USA? I mean, and the USA is so big. So where do you find the largest Lego shop? What do you think, A, B, or C? Uh, somebody's saying New York. Let's see if anybody else is coming through. Uh, we've got Copenhagen. Uh, lots of New Yorks coming mm -hmm. through. Uh, somebody else, Copenhagen. Um, well, let, let me... Yeah, lots yeah. of B's and C's. Nobody's <laughs> saying anything else. Yeah. Well, here you are then, surprise. London does have at the moment the largest Lego store in the world. Found in London, more than 900 square meters large. and has a six meter high Big Ben which of course is very famous for London, which uh, makes 200,000 bricks it's made of. So it is in London at the moment, the largest shop. And I've been there a few times and it is big and it is dangerous. Just <laughs> leave your wallet at home. 
It didn't open all that long ago, did it? No, it's no, indeed. I, I can't remember again when it was exactly, but not that long ago. No, no. it's only uh, probably about between five or ten years ago, because yeah, time yeah, does fly yeah. sometimes. But it's quite recently that it opened. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, there are many other Lego shops in London that are just the smaller ones in, in different uh, malls, etc., uh, shopping malls. But this is the official Lego shop in London, which is huge. Okay, let's move on. How many Lego bricks, two by fours, will get you to the moon? That might be handy to know. How many Lego bricks do you need? Do you need 4 billion, 40 billion, 400 billion? So how many Lego bricks, when you put them on top of each other, will get you all the way to the moon? A, Everyone's B, going for C. C at the moment seems to be the popular answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the moon is far, far, far away. But it takes 40 billion. So you don't need 400 billion people. If you only have 40 billion Lego bricks, you will get all the way to the moon. So you just start saving up and get to those 40 billion. Don't worry about 400 billion. That would get you 10 times up there. So it's not that far away after all. 40 billion bricks. SpaceX, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. True or false? Lego is the largest tire manufacturer in the world. So is Lego the company? Because there's there's many different companies out there. There's Michelin, Goodyear, uh, all kind of uh, yeah. that make tires for real cars. But Lego does it as well for for all their models. Is it true or false that Lego is the largest tire manufacturer in the world? Is it A true or B false? All right. So we've got. Oh, it's a mixed bag. Nobody's actually sure. We've got a couple of, a uh, few people saying true, true, true on Facebook, but on uh, Zoom, everyone's thinking it's false. Mm, that's interesting. So we have a so split. Who's going to come out on top? Yeah. Facebook. Who are going to be the winners? Facebook or Zoom? Well, there you go. It is true. It is true. Lego creates as a manufacturer the largest amount of uh, rubber tires. 381 million ties each year, each year. So all of the other companies also make lots of ties, each of them, but not as many as Lego does as one company. That's fabulous. Yeah, we're almost there. Which Lego model for sale right now has the largest number of pieces? Is it A, the Fiat 500? It's a lovely model. Is it B, the Taj Mahal in India that you see there in the middle? Or is it C, the Colosseum that you will find in Rome? Well, and now you can find it in the Lego shop too. And <laughs> maybe eventually at home, if you can afford it. So, but which one is the largest out of these three? Is it A, B, or C? Uh, most people are going for B or C, I think. They're, they're aiming for lots of Bs coming through. Yeah. Actually, honestly, I thought it was B as well, because I've seen the model. And then the Taj Mahal looks really big, very spacious. But at the same time, it has lots of space, of course, whereas the Colosseum is much more all put together. And it is actually C, it is 9,036 pieces that you find in that model. So that gives you a little bit of some uh, ideas about Lego in general. And we're almost there. I have a few more slides to give you some tips which might be helpful for you. So make sure that you tidy all the pieces after playing. Because I tell you, it hurts mom or dad or your brother or sister, or even yourself when you step on the piece that you left there. And I would give some suggestion advice that when you work with Lego, maybe work on a blanket. Yeah. Because it's much easier if you don't want to all put it back into a box or whatever, you can just put up the whole blanket and all the Lego is inside. And yeah. that way it's not, you're going to not lose any pieces either. So your models stay together. They're complete. It would be really a shame that if you put a model together and you've lost pieces because they've been gone all around the room and eventually maybe into the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> so be careful with that. Another tip, don't try to separate Lego pieces with your teeth. You may wonder why. Well, I'm not going to open my mouth, but actually I did it. And yeah, there was a piece of my tooth when I was younger coming off. It didn't like, because as we learned earlier, it takes about five or six adults to break a piece of Lego. So can you imagine if you tried with your teeth? Lego wins most of the times and the dentist will not be happy. So use a tool and you can see the tool on the right bottom, the Lego brick separator that will help you to take piece apart or if you need to, but please then have an adult there to help with it. They can maybe get a little uh, uh, knife from the kitchen 
a little cut knife and then just try to prime the pieces uh, away from each other if they're just too much uh, knitted together and you can't really separate them. If Lego gets stained or dirty, try to put it in a net, in a little basket, a net basket, and clean it in the dishwasher or sink. But be careful, don't use hot water. Use a cold program, or if you do it in a, bath, in, in a, in a bucket, just use some, some lukewarm water. Don't use hot water. I mean, especially when you buy some secondhand Lego, which I've done several times, it sometimes comes from homes that have been smoking and there's a smell to it, but you put it either in, in the dishwasher on a very uh, cold program and you don't need to use any kind of uh, detergent. It just, the water will do the trick and then it will be a lot cleaner and you can use it again. Fourth tip, if you have space, keep the boxes and instruction booklets. In case you want to sell it on, it's definitely much more worth. We often, I mean, when I was younger, lots of these ones, I just threw away the boxes and the booklets. And now you can get lots of these models again on Google. You can get them on the internet, how to put them together. But if you can, if you want to sell it, which sometimes is useful because you want to buy some other models, then it is a lot more worth when you still have the box and you have the uh, little booklet to it to build them. And the last tip here is don't leave Lego or Lego models in full sunlight. It will deform, the color will fade. And especially if it also carries stickers on it, any kind of logos on it, they will come off. They don't like the sunlight. So be careful where you put them to really look at them. Make sure that they're not in full sunlight. So lastly, incredible useful ways. Quickly, you can use this jewelry. You can even use it now with COVID. As you can see on the left, you can use it as a cover for your mouth to be safe from Lego. You can use it as a pet house. On the right, you see a little mouse in, in its own house built from, from Duplo blocks. You can use it as a key holder, bookends. You can, as we see, you can build a house, you can build a wall, you can build a bar. You can use it as an educational tool to teach people. It has even been used, as you can see on the right top, uh, for a turtle uh, who lost its leg to give it even like a prosthetic limb. So they use just Lego uh, little wheels under it. And so the turtle is now able to move around or flowers that never die. I mean, if you want to make mommy or daddy really happy with flowers, on the left bottom, there are flowers made of Lego, roses, and even the vase is made of Lego. It will never die and you never have to give it water. Or you can use it in company training. Many companies today are using Lego to train people. And finally, number 10, you can fill it in. There are many different ways that you can use Lego. Many, lots of ideas.